Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. I'm your co-host, Rich Gear. Uh, Doug, as usual, has come up with a pretty good uh, little topic here, and uh, about Ten Commandments, and uh, and in a, in a world that, you know that's this confused. I'm trying to figure out what's, how do you want to title the show, Doug? Well, uh, there is a problem that uh, liberals have uh, with with the Ten Commandments. Well, that's okay. And what we have, uh, what they have a problem with is uh, the fact that they want to believe that uh, all religions are equal. And they want to appear tolerant uh, of mm -hmm. all religions. And, uh, and unfortunately, the Ten Commandments doesn't uh, really help that at all. No, nah, no, there are things that are... But you know what's so funny, Doug, you know, you say that, but yeah yet they will pick and choose their own morality from time to time certain things is you know for instance one of the things i've heard that it's okay to be intolerant to let's say christianity mm -hmm. because by definition we're already intolerant so they can be intolerant to us yeah I mean, well, this is really weird stuff that it basically is trying to they don't want to come right out and say we 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 hate christianity uh, so they try to give some objective reason why it's justified to do what they're doing but they're doing the same thing I, is, is what they accuse people who believe in the Ten Commandments of. For instance, uh, you know, you, you have your own set of morality and rules and laws, mm -hmm. you call it political correctness, okay? And a lot of that steals stuff from the Ten Commandments kind of ideas. The in, uh, they, they'll stay, take stuff, let's, you know, the inhumanity, inhumanity of man to man. And I really, all the commandments except one pretty much, maybe two, have to do with human relationships to humans. Right. Yeah. There's really only one or maybe it's maybe it's, yeah, those who love the Lord, they got uh, no, no. There's still one that says, um, uh, "Keep hold of the Sabbath day." That's really for us too. Right. Uh, have, shall I have no other gods before me. That's really the main one. Is there another one? I'm trying to think of the Ten Commandments that maybe you might, might want to go down the litany of the commandments. Or at least well, let me uh, got to go. You have got in the got in, got, got mm -hmm. in the book. So let's let's start with there before because a lot of people today really are ignorant. They've heard of something called the Ten Commandments, Doug, but they really don't know what they are. I find a lot of people in the church don't really know what they are. Right. And I'm not really talking about you got to re re record them or report them in their absolute order. I have to tell you, I was a little confused, Doug, where they got some of the commandments just reading the scripture itself. First right. few of them are pretty easy, but then there's a couple of them down there were a little trickier. But um, so go ahead and why don't you well, go with there. Here's the first one, and then this is in Exodus chapter 20, mm -hmm. starting with uh, verse 2, and it says, I am the Lord thy God which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt, not have, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the one I first met, yeah, okay. And then the number two is, uh, now thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of any kind that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, and a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, so those first two are really primarily focused uh, Godward in a sense. We don't have any idols and worship only him. Okay, so those, That's right. those two. Okay, by the way, that already gets the tolerant thing out of the way because right. if all religions are equivalent, then they have to say they're all worshiping the same God, and most of them mm -hmm. would admit that they're not. Okay, um, they have different different gods. If it, Buddhism doesn't really ha isn't really not about. It's really not. It's a, it's a good religion for atheists. Okay, they right, really, yeah. there's really not a god involved. In fact, Buddhism was sort of a reaction to a lot of the, the pantheon of Hindu gods. Uh, when the Buddha came up, he was trying to react against that and pretty much didn't have much about gods at all. But anyway, so Doug, the rest of the commandments, though, primarily, don't they deal with primarily human? I mean, how, we, how humans are supposed to... Well, the third with one also is uh, dealing with God himself. Is it, what's the, the third one? The third one is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God Okay, in I'm saying, yeah, that's right, yeah, okay. Yeah, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And so uh, what, he's, uh, what God is saying is that uh, uh, my name is holy. My name, uh, mm -hmm. and this is why when we uh, get down to the bottom line, which... I dealt with you early on, is uh, no man can uh, say Jesus is Lord except with, by the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah. And no one man can uh, say Jesus be accursed except the... Who has the Holy uh, Spirit, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, and that is the, the issue is what do you really believe in your heart uh, is God? And, and if you say all religions are the same, well, uh, you have, you know, like Hinduism, you have all these different gods that they have they don't necessarily agree with each other. Which God are you going to serve, you know? And and it's sort of like, uh, you know, and I, I see this in in our country right now. What the, and I think C.S. Lewis talks, talked about this, is that you know, what often happens is you ha get uh, two different demons <laughs> and they, they sort of like the polar opposites of each other. You about the screw tape letters? The yeah, screw tape letters. Yeah. Well, what they, what they do is they just get into contention with each other, and the, the, the one side influences the other side, and pretty soon you get the things stirred up to the point where uh, you either have a, uh, uh, a war or you have something uh, yeah. really bad happen. And, and that's really what their function uh, in Satan's kingdom is, is to stir up strife and chaos and uh, immor immorality. And, and so the, uh, then the, there's uh, these commandments that says, Let the, uh, remember the Sabbath, Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all the work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It, in that uh, thou shalt not do any work, thou or thy son or thy daughter, thy manservant or thy maidservant, or their cattle or the stranger that is in the gates. For in six days the Lord had made heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now that's, that's the scripture. That's a big scripture we use in creation circles all the time. Right. Yeah. And it really helps us to understand that uh, uh, when the Lord created, he, he created it in, in that short time period. Seven literal days, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, rested six days, six day, yeah, rested on the seventh, but the sixth. And it was a pattern. We've talked about that many times mm -hmm. in the show, but it's always worth repeating, Doug. It's like, you know, most of your <clears throat> cycles, the lunar cycle, the solar mm -hmm. cycle, the year, the month, those kinds of things are based on, on those kinds of cycles. But the, but the week, there's no astronomical cycle that I've heard of that the seventh day thing corresponds the only thing that makes any sense it's a remembrance of the time and the, the right. pattern that the Lord established back in the Garden of Eden uh, seven days the six days of work and the one day of rest and he reiterates that here in this in this commandment here that we are to literally fulfill that uh, at least under the law in the Old Testament law and I think it's a even though we talk a lot in Christianity, we're not under the law in the sense of condemnation. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the patterns are not bad. The idea of having a day off uh, to rest, and that's what what he said. The, the Sabbath was made for man in the sense that, in the sense that it it, it was meant to make us force us to rest because people would not do it. They would exploit and, and you. It's you interesting know? that uh, <laughs> there's been a few cases where some societies have French tried, Revolution tried to do tried it. Tried I, I think ten I, days yeah. or something like that. Yeah, they had a ten day week. I think I, I think it was ten days, and I think the same thing was tried under the early Soviet Union. Right. They both imploded. They didn't work at all. You know, so you might say, well, seven days max we can do it, and, and I said, yeah, one of those days in seven we we need to rest. You know, of course mm -hmm. here in America we like two days. <laughs> Right, and right. That, that's interesting. You know, some people have asked the question, well, uh, even though our, our employers give us two, two days off, or at least some of our employers, yeah. uh, is that actually a violation of the commandment because it says six days to <laughs> should thou shalt work, you know? Yeah. No, I think, I think a lot of times, I, we, I've always taken a mail, you got to have at least one day. If you have more than mm -hmm. one day, fine and dandy, but it's not. It's, it's, I, I mean, there, there, yeah, there are people say and this is the, the way you interpret scripture, and, and that if this if it doesn't specifically exclude it or say specifically you have to do this, mm -hmm. then pretty much you have some flexibility and freedom, you know. Especially and, in the and, new and we do have some uh, people who uh, uh, sort of get inflexible about this and say, well. And so they, end up, they, end up un, they end up under a legalistic system that does it, that the Christ is, has not come to put us under. Yeah, and if, the, uh, if you have uh, 
church services is on Saturday, well, then the pastor's got to rest on Sunday or uh, something like that. Or like yeah, said, I mean, our, even in the Old Testament law, Doug, there were th certain things that were allowed. Mm -hmm. You know, you could do certain. Things. I mean, even as legalistic as they got, really, at the time of Christ, how they had how the law had been covered. Kind of, there were things that you could do, but yeah, but there's <clears> this. You were able to preach and teach on Sunday, on Saturdays. I mean, mm -hmm. on the Sabbath and things like that. Um, and in fact, the reality was, uh, the whole idea of a worship being a, being whether it's Saturday or Sunday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Paul himself said, you know, one 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 person holds one day above another, and right. that's perfectly. If you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. But he says another one holds them all the same. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're not under that under those strictures anymore in that same sense. Because literally, Doug, and, and it's a whole different Bible study we're not going to get into tonight, but it has to do with entering a rest mm -hmm. by your faith in Christ. We cease from our labors now, Doug, to try to enter heaven. We can never be good enough. This is right. where the Islamic State gets it wrong. They're trying to earn their way to, to, to paradise. And same thing with with, uh, with Hinduism. When they try to reincarnate, they're trying to get good enough to enter that blissful nirvana, which is kind of a nothing state, as I get it. I may be misunderstanding this whole idea of nothingness. It doesn't really appeal to me too much. But all of them are trying to earn their way to perfection, where in the New Testament it says, no, rest in my work. And that's the big deal. And that's our work, just to believe on right. the one that has been sent. And that's really difficult because that's the stone of stumbling. All of these things are in the scriptures. So what do you want? You want to go to the next one, Doug? Well, we've got, thou shalt not kill. Not, thou shalt not kill. Yeah, not kill. <laughs> We're not talking about boats here. Yeah. And thou shalt not commit adultery and thou shalt not steal. Uh, that's where I got the keel was from steal. Steal. <laughs> he, he just jumped the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so and one thing that I notice about this is as I uh, read through these, uh, I think there's uh, not one of us that haven't uh, broken these commandments either in thought one or form or another or in thought yeah and uh, we have to deal with that in, in that uh, in the fact that uh, some of these uh, commandments really have uh, what the uh, natural mind of man wants to do is to weasel his way out of the uh, we like the weasel factor. We like wriggle room. We like that. But Jesus, when he came, who's the one who who inaugurated grace? Mm -hmm. Paul talks a lot about grace. But before he did that, he basically twisted the knife. He took the law, for instance, the commandment, thou shalt not kill. <coughs> he says, if you call somebody a fool or think evil of him or mm -hmm. have hate in your heart, you've committed, you've killed. Right, yeah. If you look at a woman lustfully, mm -hmm. you've committed adultery. Holy man, there ain't too many young men that I know, you know, that at one point or another look lustfully, lustfully upon, you know, and, and I go, I go, Lord, if this is true, I go, how do you ever get married and have kids? <laughs> I, said, right, yeah. I, I was younger, I always, I had, so I didn't really, get, the point was not about putting yourself back under a law, it's just to let you know every one of us has broken it. Right, yeah. You know, I mean, he, and Jesus showed you the implications that even if you were like under this technical, you okay, I, I've obeyed it. And then look at the one guy. He said, uh, "He said I've obeyed all the laws. Okay, then go sell all you have and, and give to the poor." And a guy who was rich, he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. He's trying to show you about the generosity of heart, right. and uh, he really didn't have it. And all of us have to fight that. I fight that all the time, you know, trying not to be stingy and trying not to be selfish. And most of us want to look after our own interests, our own hide. We want to have it go our way. I'm no different. Doug, no different. We, yes, we have right. to fight that. But it, it re what the law is good for is it reveals our weaknesses and the absolute need for a Savior. By the way, Doug, I think this is the reason why the, uh, the liberal people, the, the people on this, hate this so much. Yeah, it, because they want, does, to, yeah. uh, they want to get rid of the Ten Commandments, but, and we see a lot of the cases where they're, they're removed from mm -hmm. public display. They, and want to get, the, they want to exercise that from our, our public as if discourse? That's going to get rid of them. No, now. and that's the problem, because I think in, in their heart of hearts, most of them, the Holy Spirit was come to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Mm -hmm. And I think many people inside themselves inwardly feel that they know that they're condemned and they don't like that feeling. I don't blame them. I don't mm -hmm. like it either. But they refuse the opportunity of grace and rather than saying, you know, and, and because they want that, they have the same nature as Adam and Eve had in the garden. Right. They want to be God apart from God. 
They want to do it on their own efforts. They want the knowledge of good and evil so they can fix it themselves. And the Lord is saying, you can't do that. It's like, you're the director. How do you get to this place? Well, you go here, follow the first gas station on the left, take two miles, take, and after, no, you can't get there from here. Right, yeah. And that's where it is. And people don't like that idea. Whether you want to earn your way or whether you want to bury your head in the sand and pretend there is no God, none of them like that. And the commandments reveal things we instinctively know in our hearts that are wrong. Again, C.S. Lewis, I don't know whether the argument was original with him, but I thought it was a pretty good argument. He said, really, it's interesting how pretty much all cultures across the board recognize certain things as right and wrong, mm -hmm. and yet we consistently break it. You know, that mm -hmm. is, a, is, a, is a conundrum in and of itself, because we, we make up games or rules. The people who make the rules generally mm -hmm. make up rules that we can obey. So why would we make up, this is a man-made set of documents, Doug, Right. Why would we make up rules that none of us can really break? None of us can, right. can obey all the time. We, we can't do it. Well, let's continue so, on here. Anyway. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, hmm. yeah, which is lying. Uh, and then, but it says thou shalt not lie. Right, yeah. So, yeah thou shalt not steal. So this is sort of, a, it, it is lying, but it's an interesting different ramification about lying. It's a specific, it's, a, it's you're making a testimony, like a court thing. Mm -hmm. You know, where there, there's, you know, you can lie and slander and things, and it may hurt the person individually, but this other one, I've always wondered why did he put that second thing in there? Because it seems like it's the same thing, but it seems like maybe one is more of a, kind of a, in a, in a court of opinion, you know, or when your people are trying to find out something, you know, when, when two or three witnesses shall be against, you know, ball, false witness is more like a legal kind of a thing. Have you ever heard of the liar's paradox? The liar's paradise. The liar's paradise. I don't so, think so. Maybe, maybe well, I am. But you know, if I tell you that I am lying, if I am telling the truth, am I really lying? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's the paradox. Uh, but uh, it is interesting in that uh, uh, it's so easy to, uh, uh, and we do it out of fear. You know, if if we are found out that. Uh, we're not being straight with somebody, or, or, with, or we found out that we're lusting at, after somebody's wife, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you well, did say there, when one of the commandments, do not cover your neighbor's goods or no, your yeah. neighbor's wife. I don't know if that does in that. That's the next one, yeah. yeah. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover the, thy neighbor's wife's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything else that is thy neighbor's. Yeah, and so uh, I, I don't want your donkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have one anyway. So coveting is sort of a, a strange animal, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it is it is interesting. I watch, uh, you know, Doug. In, in modern politics, the reason why one party over another is so successful is because they deal in the politics of envy. Right, the yeah. rich people have something, I deserve it, I covet that, you should penalize him, even though you, you're not really any better off. Right. Generally you're not, you, don't, you haven't earned anything else, you haven't, you, no more money is coming to you because of penalizing this guy, but that coveting has really set up an incredibly disastrous and horrible system. We have a huge welfare state because of it. We yeah. started out wanting to help people, but really, a lot of it is because they're envious of other people's. And they, and the, the whole right now is anybody who's, quote, rich is evil based on this mm -hmm. kind of politics of envy, if you will. But the, they're coveting other people's goods. And is it saying that those other people's goods were earned properly? Or that is, it's irrelevant to that. It's about you coveting something that has not, you have not been blessed with. You can earn stuff and you can, you can do things, but the point of it is to covet that is a grievous sin that causes all kinds of problems in your yeah, life, Jesus, my life, and in our lives, you know. Jesus' parables uh, runs very counter to this. The parable of the guy with ten talents and the oh. other guy with two talents yeah. and another guy with one. And it's the guy with the one that goes and hides it and doesn't do anything with it. Right. And then expects a reward uh, when he gives it back to him. And uh, where the rest of them were actually going out and uh, making something out of the investment that uh, Jesus put into them. And right. that's the counter to the, the welfare state. The welfare state, uh, what happens, and, and what Jesus says is that the, 
a guy with one talent who didn't do anything with it. It's ta taken away from He's him. He's going to lose that. And gave, give it to the going to give it to the guy who's got everything, the ten talents. You know? Yeah, and that's what the, you know, the principles of uh, that Jesus teaches about uh, the managing money uh, is all about. You have to... Well, it's money, it. but it's talent, it's time. It's everything that you've been given in your life to do something with. And, uh, and sometimes, i got to tell you, Doug, sometimes I feel like, oh, boy, Lord, I hope I'm not the guy that buried I didn't... You know, sometimes don't you feel like you haven't done enough of what you've been given? I do. I always, mm -hmm. I, you know, sort of that, that little twist. If I didn't understand grace... Is, is is you know the how how great it really is, but uh, cause, but it does it does convict you to do more with what you have sometimes. It right, really yeah. does. That's a good thing. As I say, uh, you know, uh, conviction motivates you to action. Condemnation basically is destructive, and the Lord wants you to enter from the condemned world to the convicted world, so that you may act accordingly and grow in His kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing to do. You know. What's the next one, Doug? Are we doing? Yeah, yeah, we're done. But we got them all. Okay. Yeah, that's I all thought the that was commandments. The but the, the the question I would ask about our about these commandments is, you know, this is really contrary to the way the world thinks, and each one of these things is a uh, things that separates uh, us as Christians and as believers in God. From from the rest of the world, the rest of the world wants to say, well, maybe what I can do um, when I get to God is explain to Him how I live my life, and, he, and God will say, oh, wow, gee, <laughs> I, I'm glad you explained that all to me. And come on uh, in, <laughs> not gonna happen. Yeah, and. Uh, we are responsible to the, these things that God has written in His Word, and the people don't like to uh, uh, to have to deal with that. It's a, a very difficult thing, uh, but they they don't understand that God actually provided another way, and that's through His Son Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is why Doug, the Christian <coughs> life, should be resting in his work mm -hmm. not striving the, of course there is sort of a an oxymoronish or a if you will counterintuitive way of doing this because to rest in Christ you have to strive to get there that yeah, seems that, almost that, like the strange, opposite yeah. by the way that's that's very typical in a lot of, a lot of Christians and that may, makes it difficult Doug if you want to live you have to die to self. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a lot of things like that in Scripture. You know, you, you, that seem you, contradictory, but uh, when you when actually, you live in them, they are not. They, it's like if you want to be a master, you need to serve. Right. You know, lording it over people has never been God's way. Never has been. And Jesus you know? washed his disciples' feet. Well, he gives us the, that's why he gave you as, as an example for us. Right. And that's hard to do because. Basically, we all the things we like to pretend we aren't. We are lustful. We are prideful. We are selfish. Uh, and and anybody anybody who says they're not is basically another one. They're a liar. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's <laughs> so, right. So you're condemned in that regard because lying is liars will never find find their place in in the heavenly realms. And these are all things we have to we strive to not be these things. Yeah. And we get better. But the reality is we rest in a finished work of one who was perfect. Right. And, that's, and that also, by the way, Doug, it, it really assaults our pride, especially men. I think women have their, their pride in other th in things, but men especially want to be self-reliant, especially in this culture, this American culture. Yeah. We don't like the idea that we have to fall on our knees and worship the one who did it for us. And I go, but to me, that's not so hard when you really realize he made everything. He redeems mm -hmm. everything. He's alive forevermore. And in Him, we will be alive forevermore. In Him, we will never have to die anymore. We don't have to fear about those things. Without Him, everything else happens. Yeah. Condemnation, death, destruction, enmity, strife. Everything you think of that we really instinctively know is wrong. Antithetical to the commandments. We will end up living. That's in. right. And I, uh, I'm a horrible liar. And uh, I got caught in a lie this week. And... 
Uh, <laughs> I had to eat fess my up? words. Yeah, fess right. up. And, uh, you know, that's that's really tough. You it, know, it's uh, and uh, when you mm, say a couple of things that are contradictory and you get caught, uh, it, it's just uh, very uncomfortable. Yeah, and you go, God, I wish I didn't do that. I wish I had those words back. Mm -hmm. But you can't. But you don't know the thing about it. What's really cleansing is. Um, <clears throat> I, I, it's not about lying, but it's about something. I remember talking about doing something for the Lord. I would, and people knew I was a Christian mm -hmm. at this one area. And I was really bad-mouthing this guy because he was really hard on us. He was a tough boss. Mm -hmm. and he, was a, he, he, he could be a mean, well, mean SOB, as they say. He really, and everybody didn't like him. And mm -hmm. I'm talking bad-mouthing just like everybody. Then I realized, uh-oh. And I finally had a, and the people did not catch me in this. I mean, because they were, they were sympathetic. That I looked at them yeah. and said, you know what I'm just doing there? You guys know I'm a Christian guy. And everything I did is really against everything I, I say I should be as a Christian. And right. I was wrong. And then I got convicted. I have to go up to the boss and tell him what I'd done. Mm -hmm. And that guy became my best buddy. He totally let everything change. I'm not saying that's what was going to happen, but... Doug, right. that was a conviction that happened inside, and it's better if that happens than if somebody else catches you. Right. God is a lot more gentle than people are. Trust me, when they catch you in your lies or your or your shame, you, you know? know. If you can confess your own sin, uh, then God is faithful to forgive and uh, and uh, bless you. But if you uh, get get caught by somebody else, and uh, when you're out of line. Uh, then that's when you suffer it's the same three things that John talked about Doug consequences the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life and those things will trip you up every time the commandments expose that that's why the world is uncomfortable with it in this political realm we have it it's even worse but the reality is is that we we need to fall on the master who has made everything mm -hmm. who has given us a way of escape and of eternal life no, we didn't do much with creation except to talk about the six days. If we talk about time. the six days, you know what? We got a little bit in there. That's okay, you know? But um, I think uh, the Ten Commandments is the foundation for everything that we, we believe, and uh, it's also the foundation for the grace of God and uh, how He can redeem us from the, the penalty of sin. Um, and because we rely upon Him uh, to save us. All the other religions don't do that. They, nope. they don't have, you know, that's a uh, matter of works, not grace. It's all a matter of works. So we'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution. We hope you enjoyed our time in the Word with the Ten Commandments.